Hello guys, today let's talk about seeding the data in production. Recently I've tweeted this tip that in the seeder you can check whether the environment is local or not. For example, if you want to create some local admin for your local testing. And this tweet became quite popular with a lot of likes, but one of the replies got me thinking to expand on the topic. Nunu Maduro, the member of Laravel team, stated that seeders should be for local development only. And I kind of disagreed because I've been doing that all the time. And after the conversation with Nunu and other people on Twitter, we kind of parted our own ways with the thought that everyone does that differently and there's no right or wrong answer. So let's discuss in this video and in the YouTube comments, I will show you a few ways how you can, how you may see the data into production. And let's discuss how you do it and what it would depend on. So imagine the example that you need to see the roles in your application. So role seeder has this. You have roles for super admin, editor, viewer, or something. The question is, how would you see that data in your live server, the production server before the launch? And the way how I've been doing that all the time is in database seeder, you can add row seeder and that is fine. But what Nuno is saying that he's been doing that with migration. So you can do something like in the migrations, after you create the roles, you immediately see the data. So if we copy that from here, so there's no row seeder, there's three sentences of role create directly in the migration. So when you create the table, you immediately get the data, which is probably static and will not change anytime soon. The first seeded data, whether it's production or not. In general, migration files are not just for the schema. Technically, you can do anything here, any data manipulation, but you need to be careful with that. So this is the second option and Nunu is probably voting for that. The only difference I see here is that migrations would run automatically with automated tests. So if in the test you have use refresh database, these roles would be automatically created. And I'm not sure I want that in my application with refresh database, I would probably prefer a clean database and then would create the records in each test separately when I need them. But maybe in some cases, those roles would be okay to be created with migrations and then it may make your tests easier to write. Not sure. It depends on your situation probably. What I would suggest though is instead of doing role create, always do first or create to avoid the duplications because maybe someone has already launched the migrations or seeds or something. And if you launch first or create, first would just return that record. And if it doesn't exist, it would create that. So we've covered two ways to seed the data with seeder or in migration, but there's also the third way. What if you want to do that just one time and forget about it? You need some data just for production server. It wouldn't be needed anywhere on testing on your local or elsewhere. You just want that in production. You can SSH into production, go PHP artisan tinker and create the record. So just do PHP artisan tinker and then role create name admin or something. So we have our role here added to our database. So for such manual thing, you don't need to add anything in the code. You work directly with the database or you may even use your SQL client like table plus or PHP my admin or whatever you use to add the data. But I would advise that only in rare cases, in most cases that data is probably useful for a lot of environments like for testing or for your local. So that's why the seeders actually exist in the first place. And final note I want to make, if you want to use some fake data, do not use that in production. Use faker or fake helper or this faker only for your local or testing environments, partly because in composer JSON for a reason, faker is in require dev, not in require. So if your deployment script contains only the required packages, not require dev, that's your personal preference, but a lot of developers do exactly that then faker wouldn't even work and would throw an error. So for example, if we run composer install no dev, it would install only the packages from require, not from require dev, which is already the case for me. So nothing to install, update or remove. And now if we launch DB seed, which contains faker, we'll have an error call to undefined function fake 
because there is no faker package installed. So this is just a general advice, do not fake data on production. I guess it's pretty obvious, but I wanted to specifically point that you will get an error on production if you use faker, if you don't install it from required dev. Anyway, back to the original point, what is the method you use for seeding such data? Something like static data, like world countries, like currencies, like roles, something really static, which you probably won't change much or ever. Do you use seeders? Do you use migrations? Or do you use that manually by Tinker or PHP admin? Or maybe you have some more tricks. Shoot in the comments below, let's discuss. And if you want to see my ways, how I do things in my projects, I have a lot of courses around Laravel and related technologies like Livewire, Alpine, View, React, Filament, and stuff like that. So I advise you to subscribe to yearly membership of that. And by doing that, you will support this YouTube channel so I can continue shooting free videos here on YouTube. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.